this video, we are going to practice setting up and performing unit conversions. For example, converting from grams into nanograms. And this is also going to give us a chance to practice using the metric prefixes. It's going to give us a opportunity to practice scientific notation, including entering it into our calculator. And it will also give us a chance to practice expressing our numbers to the correct number of significant figures. So let's jump right in with the first example, converting 5.02 times 10 to the minus 4 grams into nanograms. To set this problem up, you want to start by writing the number that has been given to you, 5.02 times 10 to the minus 4 grams. Don't forget the unit because it's really important. We want to multiply that number by a conversion factor, which is going to be a fraction. So I've got it set up so that it's going to be a fraction. We're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And we're going to set this conversion factor up so that our unwanted unit, which is the gram, we want our unwanted unit down on the bottom of this fraction conversion factor. That way, the gram units mathematically will cancel each other out with one on top and one on the bottom. They're just gonna end up canceling out. We also want on this conversion factor fraction, we want our desired unit to be up on top. Our desired unit is the nanogram, so we want that up here. And this is like the framework for our conversion factor. We have our unit set up correctly, and all we have to do now is enter in the numerical values that will actually make this a conversion factor. The numerical values that we want to put into this conversion factor come from our understanding of the metric prefixes. So we're going to focus on nano because that is the unit that we're looking at here. And this table tells us that nano is the prefix that means 10 to the minus 9. So that tells us that when we have one nano anything, like one nanogram, that means that we have 10 to the minus 9 of that thing. So one nanogram is 10 to the minus 9 grams, or one nanometer would be 10 to the minus 9 meters. We're going to take these numbers with their units, and we're going to plug them into the conversion factor correctly. So we can see one nanogram, the number one, is associated with the nanogram. So we want the number one right here on the top associated with the nanogram. And we have 10 to the minus 9, that is associated with the gram unit, so we want that to go down here on the bottom, 10 to the minus 9. Now the way that we have this set up, when we actually do the math here, we're going to do 5.02 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1 divided by 10 to the minus 9. When we do all of this math, our gram units will end up mathematically canceling each other out and we'll be ending up with units of nanogram, which is perfect. Now you can probably do this math in your head or maybe probably, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but let's pull the calculator out so that we can practice entering these numbers correctly into the calculator. So let's go with, we're, I'm gonna start by entering this number into the calculator. Remember, instead of using times 10 something something, we're gonna use the EE button or the EXP button. So I have 5.02 EE, which means times 10 to the, and now I need to do negative four. 5.02 times 10 to the negative 4. And so now our next job is to multiply that by, in this case, 1, which you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go through all of the steps here. And now we need to divide by 10 to the minus 9. For me personally, with my calculator, I like to think about this as 1 times 10 to the minus 9 because I really like to rely on that EE button. So when I have this written as 1 times 10 to the minus 9 on my calculator, I recognize that as 1 EE negative 9. So we're going to go divided by 1 EE negative 9. And I'm not sure why this calculator changes um, changes this up. Like I, I like all those nines on there. I don't know why it did that, but that's just what it does. So I'm going to. It gives us a good chance to practice expressing numbers to the right number of sig figs. So I'm going to copy this down, kind of. I've got five zero one nine 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 point nine nine. That's good enough. 
and my unit is nanograms. So let's get rid of that calculator and let's take this number and put it into the correct number of significant figures. When we're doing multiplication and division, to determine the correct number of sig figs for our answer, we have to look at the number of significant figures in every thing that we have multiplied or divided. So for this number, what we started with, we can see that there's a decimal point present. So that means that the five is significant and every digit to the right of it is also significant. So this number, 5.02 times 10 to the minus four, that has three sig figs. Now for this fraction, one nanogram over 10 to the minus nine grams, this is actually a counted number, not a measured number. This is a counted number. And that is true for all metric to metric conversions. So whenever we have conversion factor between two metric units, uh, that will always be a counted number, which means that they will always have an infinite number of significant figures. Now, this is just because that's how the metric system works. The metric system def defines nanograms and grams in terms of, you know, counting how many nanograms you can put into a gram. Because all metric to metric conversions are counted, they all have infinite sig figs, so we really don't ever even look at them when we're trying to determine how many sig figs we should have in our answer. This tells us that we should only have three significant figures in our answer. So over here, the calculator has dumped out nine significant figures, and I need to turn that into just three. Now your calculator may give you the answer in exponential notation. Remember I told you it probably won't give it to you in the correct number of sig figs. My calculator uh, up here in the top corner, like where I'm, I don't know if you can see that under my battery symbol, in little, little numbers, it is giving it to me in exponential notation. 5.020 E5. So let's copy that down. Five. 0.020 E5. And I'm going to erase this garbage because we already know that that's not correct. So what does this mean in my calculator? That means 5.020 times 10 to the 5. Don't forget our units, nanograms. How many sig figs are we allowed to have? We're only allowed to have three. Over here we have one, two, three, four. So all I have to do to make this valid is to erase that last zero. Now I have one, two, three, and my answer to the correct number of sig figs is 5.02 times 10 to the five nanograms. Let's try another one. So our next problem here, we have 8.43 centimeters to millimeters. We wanna start by writing the number that's given to us, 8.43 centimeters. We wanna multiply by a conversion factor. It's gonna be a fraction. And on the bottom of our fraction, we wanna put the unit that we're trying to get rid of, which is centimeters. And on the top of the fraction, ideally, we wanna put the unit that we're trying to convert into, which in this case is millimeters. To fill the numbers into this conversion factor, we go up to our table of uh, metric prefixes, and we're going to start by finding centi. Centi is 10 to the minus two, so that tells us that one centimeter, centimeter in this case, is 10 to the minus two meters. So that's a relationship between centimeters and meters doesn't really apply to this case. Let's see if we can get some information from millimeters. So here's our milli prefix, one millimeter or milla anything is 10 to the minus three meters. So again, um, we're, we're kind of stuck here. We have a centimeter to meter relationship and we have a millimeter to meter relationship, but we don't have a direct relationship between millimeters and centimeters. Now, I know you guys are clever. You could probably figure one out by looking at that, but let's pretend like you can't. Let's pretend like that, that's more than you can handle. So let's get rid of that millimeter on top because we're pretending like we can't figure out how to convert into that millimeter unit. And just to be clear, it may not be, it probably isn't immediately intuitive to you how to combine these two together to make one conversion factor. But if you thought about it for a while, you would be able to figure it out. But we're gonna move on. We're not gonna try to figure it out. 
We cannot convert directly from centimeters into millimeters, but we can convert from centimeters into meters. So let's just do that. Let's do that first step and have faith that this is gonna get us where we wanna be. Look at our centimeter to meter relationship. One goes with the centimeter unit and 10 to the minus two goes with the meter unit. So in that step, we're gonna cancel out the centimeter unit. That's, and, and we're gonna convert into the meter unit, but that's not really what we want, which means we just need another conversion factor. Another conversion factor that's going to put the meter unit down on the bottom so that we can cancel it off and get into our desired unit, which is the millimeter. Go back up to our prefixes again. How can we use them? The one goes with the millimeter and the 10 to the minus three goes with the meter. And in this step, our meter units will cancel. We'll be left with millimeters. This is going to work perfectly. All that we have to do now is plug this into our calculator. Now, before we go to the calculator, let's think about how many sig figs we want to have in our answer so that we don't have to waste our time copying too many sig figs. So when we look at our numbers over here in the first number that we start with, we have a total of one, two, three significant figures, three sig figs. We have a metric to metric conversion, which is infinite. And we have another metric to metric conversion, which is infinite. So that means that our answer, whatever it ends up being, needs to be expressed to three significant figures. This is another one that you could probably do in your head, but let's pull the calculator out and practice entering these numbers into our calculator. And so we are going to start with 8.43, 8.43. We are going to multiply by, remember I like to think of these as 1 times 10 to the minus 2. So we want to multiply by 1 EE e minus 2. And I'm not going to divide by 1. And now we have our second conversion factor. Multiply by 1, which I'm not going to do on the calculator and divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So divided by 1 EE e minus 3. And let's see what we get. 84.3 is our answer, and we need to have our answer expressed in three sig figs, which is exactly how many sig figs the calculator happens to give us. Remember, it's not always going to give you the right number of significant figures, so we do always want to double check. So what I'm going to do now is stop this video. I do have a whole bunch more examples of this for you, but I want to break it up so that we don't have any videos that are too large. So if you want more practice with this, just continue on to the next video and we're going to get into some trickier unit conversions.